Hey everyone, I am your astrologer Wonder Girl, helping you to live in tune with the natural cycles of the moon. This is your astrology horoscope for the new moon in Libra, which happens on Wednesday, October 6, 2021 at 7.04 a.m. Eastern Time or 4.04 a.m. Pacific Time. Now, what I think is going on at this new moon is that we are uh, trying to do our relationships, our time and resources, and our thought processes much differently than we ever have before, and to do them differently in which we honor more of our intuition and more of our soul's emotional needs as we move forward. And I think we're getting a big boost to do that at this new moon and a lot of passion and a lot of drive in order to finally make that happen. But even though we're getting a big boost of passion and drive to make that happen, I think it's coming on a little too strong, which is a bit overwhelming for us. Not only do I think it's coming on a bit too strong, but I think we feel like there's just too much, too much that we need to fix and change as well, which is making us quite frustrated with ourselves and possibly angry at other people, some arguments with other people too, um, for things Things not really turning around in the way that we might like quite yet. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you want to hear more about that, please stay tuned because I'm going to hop into it right now. In order to start talking about this new moon in Libra, though, what I always like to do first is just place it on the chart so that you can see what it is that I'm referring to here and follow along with me. So let's do that now. Um, what is the new moon? The new moon is when the moon and the sun make a conjunction. As you can see right here at this chart, we've got the moon and the sun both at 13 degrees, the same degree in the same sign of Libra. Okay. Um, what are new moons all about? Well, new moons are all about new beginnings, new energy and fresh starts, especially since it is what now begins the a new lunar month, a new lunar cycle. Okay, what are we getting a new beginning, a new energy or a fresh start in Libra, since that's the sign it's in? What is Libra about? Well, Libra um, has to do with a few things. Uh, I'll start by saying that Libra being an air sign in some way does have to do with our thought processes, how we think through things, and especially too with Libra correlating to what the courts and the law, the law and the court systems, the way we justify things in our lives. So we're getting, I think, a new, a new way here of thinking about our lives and of justifying what we're doing. Not only that, but I should also note too that Libra is a lot about balance being the symbol of the scales. But the way I'm going to define balance here for the sake of this video is the way that we divide our time and our resources. So not only at this new moon are we really trying to get a new way of thinking about our lives and justifying things, but we're also trying to get a new way of dividing our time and our resources. And last but not least, Libra is also the sign of relationships here, being ruled by Venus and opposite uh, Aries. Um, so that's another thing that's going on during this time period at this new moon, is that we're trying to also get a new way of approaching uh, relationships, working with relationships as well um, as we move forward. Okay, now what new way is all this about? What new way of thinking and of dividing our time and resources and of working with relationships are we getting? Well, based on the way some things have been going on in the astrology, I want to be clear, this isn't just any old way. This is a new way of doing those things that prioritizes our intuition, our spirituality, and our emotional needs, and, and the truth of our soul, and what our soul is saying uh, from here on out. And that also does prioritize more peace, more peace, more rest, more relaxation, more happiness, and more joy as well. Okay, um, so that's what's going on here. Another point that I want to make too is that even though it is all three of these things that is happening at this time, that we are, you know, number one, getting a new way of thinking and justifying things in our lives that uh, lets us trust more of our intuition and have fun and justify that happiness is a thing that needs to happen and fun is a thing that needs to happen. And not only number two, are we getting a way of a new way of dividing our time and resources that also allows us to rest and relax and have fun. And not only number three, are we getting a new way of doing relationships that also is easier for us and honors our our emotional needs. Not only is all that true, but I want to note that the relationships to me stands out a little bit more than the rest, that the relationship stuff to me seems to take more of the center stage than the other two areas that I mentioned at this time, even though they all really still apply. The reason why relationships might take a little bit more center stage here is because Libra is like officially the sign of relationships, um, which this new moon is in. And because I think we've been trying to work out our thought processes and our daily routines for quite some time, especially. Um, over the course of the past few weeks after that new moon in Virgo. Um, so 
I just wanted to be very clear about that. It, it is all three of these things, new thought processes, new division of time and resources, new way of relationships that prioritizes our peace, our rest, our soul's needs and our intuition, but relationships may be a little bit more important at this time um, or start to pick up a bit more than it has to kind of really work through things through with. All right now, before I tell you more about this theme in particular and how that's going to more specifically uh, work out at this new moon, you know me, I do want to go backwards in time for a little bit before I go forwards here, just to give you more of the context of this new moon and how we got here and why this is now a thing that's coming up to be worked through. And to give you that context, I want to go back to the last um, new moon solar eclipse a few months ago here in Gemini in June of 2021. A few months ago. <clears throat> I want to go back to that because solar eclipses are, are pretty big deals. I suppose you could say that start new cycles that last for at least six months, but many times uh, for many years after that. So I want to look at that new moon solar eclipse right here in Gemini. What was that about? Well, in my opinion, that solar eclipse was about us starting to settle into Gemini and make more familiar Gemini, some new and different, and I think better chapter of life that has been trying to arrive really since the end of last year. Okay, and it was about us settling into um, and getting more familiar with that um, new chapter in life so that we can experience it, you know, a little bit more than we had before and get used to it. And I believe that in the month of June, we were able to do that. Okay, that then leads me to the next new moon, which we had a month later now in July of 2021, uh, right here around the middle degrees of Cancer. What is that about? Well, Cancer does have a lot to do with our roots and our foundation. Uh, in life and being more grounded. So what I think happened in July is that now that we were in some new chapter in life and we're making it more familiar, this was us really trying to ground that new chapter in life so that it had a more firm foundation from which to grow more long term and last the test of time. And I do believe that in July, we were able to do that. Okay, that then leads me to the next new moon, which we had here in Leo, um, about the middle degrees in August, the middle of August, <laughs> 2021. Um, what was that about? Well, Leo is a lot about happiness and joy and love. So what I think occurred in August 2021 is that we said, you know what, I'm in a new and different and better chapter of life and I'm settling into it and making it more familiar and grounding it and giving it a firm foundation. Now let me think how I can actually be happier in this new chapter in life that's here and make it all my own and make it something that I really enjoy and that really resonates with me. And I do believe that in August, we got some big understanding and some big insights of what makes us happy in this new space and of how to bring more of that together. Because we got some insights about how to be happy, then we get the next new moon here in Virgo, which was the last one that we just had about a month ago in September of 2021. Uh, what was that about? Well, Virgo is a lot about our habits and our daily routines. So what I think happened in September is we said, ah, now that I know what I need to be happy in a new chapter in life, let me change my habits and let me change my daily routines and possibly even my thought processes with the Virgo influence to allow this happiness into my life and to allow this joy and to allow this pleasure. And I'm also going to add too, because that new moon was opposite Neptune to allow more emotional ease and rest and peace and relaxation and more intuition. And I think as we went throughout um, most of that month of September, um, we tried to do that, but we really struggled. We really struggled to fully change our habits and our routines towards this happiness, joy, ease, rest, relaxation, and intuition. Why did we struggle? I think we struggled a good bit because of Mercury, which entered retrograde in Libra at the end of September, uh, bringing up challenges. What challenges did Mercury retrograde in Libra bought? Well, it brought uh, challenges with us fully stepping into um, our, more of our happiness and a happier and easier way of life because, one, our thought processes were out of whack. We didn't think it, it made sense. We didn't think it was justifiable for us to rest and relax and have fun when we have other things in life that are going on and need to take care of. Not only did we have problems having a happier way of life because it's just not justifiable time to rest and relax and listen to our intuition, but also because our division of time and resources was out of whack. Our division of time and resources was not tilted towards intuition and rest. It was tilted towards work and towards stress and towards all this other stuff that we had to do as well that was also not working for us and making us making it difficult. Not only that, but our relationships, our relationships, I think, were also out of sorts and not really where we need them to be either we were afraid, afraid to tell people things because we didn't want to upset them. 
Okay, And because we were trying to adjust our life to be happier and weren't for those three reasons, we now, this month, this new moon, for which this video is for here, October 2021, with this new moon very close to Mercury retrograde, we now this month are engaging more fully with those issues. We're engaging more fully with those issues that are stopping us from changing our life more and more and more to be happier and to be more restful, more relaxing, more peaceful, more intuitive, and more at ease. We're now engaging with those issues so that we can fix them. Engaging with the mindset that's not letting us have fun, engaging with the the time and the resources that are not in an easier way so that we can get them there and engaging with the relationships one-on-one -on -one who are not what we need them to be so that we can fix them and eventually move forward here in ways that it is that we need. Okay. Um, and that is it. That to me is the context of this time period. Um, because that was a bit, I suppose, I'm now just going to repeat all of that one more time before I move forward. Okay, so let me do that. What I think is the larger context of this time period um, is that we are trying to um, step into an easier way of life in which we rest, relax, play, have more fun, and honor more of our intuition, but we've ha been having some problems doing that because our relationships are not where they need to be, our time and our resources is not where it needs to be, and our mindset is also stopping us, and because we've had problems this New Moon is about us engaging with those issues to really overcome them and fix them so that we eventually can be happy after this is done and eventually can move into a better time of life. Okay, um, and that's it. Because that's it. Um, in terms of the context, I'm now going to go a little bit more into detail about this New Moon in particular um, and how it's going to play out. And to do that, I'm now going to look at the specific astrological aspects this New Moon is making. And I'm perhaps going to start... Um, with, with the most obvious ones here, which is the fact that this new moon is conjunct Mars. If you can see it very closely to 13 degrees. And I'm also going to include Mercury retrograde in that. Um, so what does this mean to me? I'm going to start positive. I'm going to start positive here. Well, I'll say this. New moons are about new energy um, and fresh starts and a little bit more momentum. And so is Mars. You know, Mars correlates to Aries, the first sign of the Zodiac, which is very passionate, very passionate, very driven. So what this means to me is at this new moon, we are very passionate and very driven with more of a boost of energy here to really fix these things. You know, we come into this new moon really driven, not not just laissez-faire, not just, oh, I got things in my life that aren't going to work. Maybe I'll fix them later. Maybe aren't. No, we come into this this new moon saying, I, I have I have issues. <laughs> I have issues with relationships, not where they need to be. I've got issues with my job and my time and my resources and my thought processes that are not allowing me to rest and relax and trust my intuition. And I really need to get to the bottom of these things. I really need to adjust them so that I can be happy and so that I can get to the other side okay not only do we come in to this new moon with like a lot of passion and a lot of drive to like fix this stuff figure this stuff out but with mercury involved about to conjunct the sun halfway through its retrograde cycle i tend to like when that occurs i think we're starting to get some big insight and some big illumination right the sun is the brightest star in the sky so when mercury conjuncts it something comes to light so not only at this new moon in Libra is there an extra drive, extra passion, extra ambition to fix these things that are keeping us from being happy, but I think we're starting to get major insight, major understanding, major illumination about what needs to be fixed in all three areas, but especially relationships, and about how we need to fix them as well. That is very, very good. Okay, because we're getting more drive, more passion, more encouragement to fix these things and some insights with this new moon, I should say, trying kind of far, I'm still going to count it though, trying Jupiter and Aquarius, I think we're starting to get more optimistic about our future Aquarius and about what is to come and about us potentially having some freedom now from these old things that are keeping us stuck. Not only are we getting more excited, to me, Jupiter's a lot about optimism, excitement and optimism about what's to come, but I think we're also getting a little bit more clarity too about our future as well since we're getting the insights we need to fix this old stuff which to me um, is very very positive especially too with Pluto going direct at the time of this new moon literally within like an hour an hour after it or two 
Um, this to me is also very good as well. So not only do we come into this new moon extremely motivated, highly motivated here to fix these old issues and with some good insights and understandings on how to do it, that's giving us a lot of optimism and a lot of clarity. But this to me is also us getting more of the more of the courage in some way with the Pluto here to make change. Pluto to me is about permanent change to make permanent changes that maybe we've been needing to make all year, especially while Pluto has been retrograde for most of the year in order to uh, turn our life in a different direction with it being in Capricorn, okay? So this to me um, is all very good, I do like. <laughs> but even though I do like all those things, I should note that there is a dark side <laughs> to most of those things that I just mentioned, okay? Um, why is there a bit of a challenge or dark side to these good things I just mentioned? Well. Um, because Mars, I should note. Mars is technically a malefic planet that does correlate to war and aggression, especially by the ancient astrologers, and it's in Libra, a sign it doesn't like to be in here. Um, so that is a tad bit of a challenge, especially too with Mercury still retrograde. Sure, halfway through its retrograde cycle, but still retrograde. So what does this mean to me? Well, I'll start with Mars. When Mars goes negatively, it can bring too much. It can bring too many feelings, too fast, too strong. So what this indicates to me is that we are coming into this new moon really feeling motivated. I got a lot of issues I need to fix with people who aren't doing what I need them to do, with my time, with my resources, with my job, with my habits still, with my mindset. I got a lot of things I need to fix. I want to fix and I'm getting the insights to do it in order to make it happen and I'm getting the clarity. But but oh my gosh, there's so much I want to do. There's so much feeling. There's so much passion. There's so much drive. It's just very, very overwhelming. You know, there's just so many feelings. It's kind of running us over in some way. Not only can this bring so many feelings of like, I have to fix this at all costs. I have to fix this at all costs. That could be quite hard. But there could also be the feeling too is I don't know where to start because I feel so compelled internally, so internally compelled to fix these things. Um, and, I have, and I have so many emotions. I don't know where to start because of all these feelings. Not only could we not know where to start because we just feel so much, we want to fix so much, but there could actually be so much that needs to be done. <laughs> so much that needs to be fixed. There could be so much with relationships that ain't right. There could be so much with our time and with our resources and with our thought processes that aren't right as well. So I think that's part of the issue. We got a lot of passion, a lot of drive here to fix a lot of things that need fixing in our lives, but there is so freaking much that needs to be fixed that isn't where we want it to be. And our feelings are coming on so strong in order to fix these things that are hard to manage. And we do not know where to start because of the feelings, because of all this stuff going on here. Not only may we not know where to start, but we could also be scared, right? Mars and Libra, Mars doesn't like to be in Libra. Libra hesitates, right? It hesitates to do things. So there could also be this feeling too of like, I don't know where to start and now I'm scared. And now I'm either hesitating or if you're not hesitating, it could indicate you doing things stop and start. So I'm, I'm good. I'm, do, I'm kind of fixing something and then, and then I'm not and then I'm coming on too strong and then I'm not coming on strong enough. That can be a bit hard here as well. OK, not only can this create a lot of weird emotions within yourself, like you run in yourself over so much to do, so much to fix, so many feelings, kind of scared, kind of not. A lot of mixed emotions here, but sometimes that can translate into external events, especially with Libra being the sign of relationships. So not only could we be so mad at ourselves, I got to fix this stuff. So much is going on. I don't know where to start, I'm, but I'm also kind of scared, but I also want to do things. We could be mad at other people. We could start to get angry and uh, at other people. It might be in a passive aggressive way because Mars and Libra kind of does that, doesn't kind of skirts around the issue. It might be in a passive aggressive way, but we could start to get a little bit angry people too and a little snappy. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? I, I, this needs to happen. You know, there could be a lot of that as well. Um, that's going on here too. That could be part of the issue. Not only could there be that, but again, with Mercury retrograde conjunct all this, the, the communication could be a little bit off as well. Um, so we could be having all these intense emotions within ourselves um, that are really hard to handle that we may be externalizing at other people and getting mad at other people for, or they may be getting mad at me at, and the communication may not be there to back it up. So we may be getting mad at other people, or they may be getting mad at us without telling us why they're mad at us or what really goes on and without fully explaining the situation here as well, that could be um, a bit difficult, okay? 
We can also be starting to act. I should note too soon before we're really ready. Um, that could be hard here. And because, because we are feeling too many feelings and not sure where to start and mad at ourselves and <laughs> for some of us mad at other people or with other people mad at us and not communicating clearly, that can then bring, again, with Mercury retrograde here, confusion. Confusion about something we were just starting to get clarity on. Confusion about something that we were just getting like a lot of support to fix. Okay, not only could there be confusion because of this intense emotion, really, um, but um, things could spiral downwards from there. Okay, because in addition to all this stuff that's going on, we've got um, a quincunx. The new moon is making a quincunx over here to Uranus and Taurus, which is also difficult. And what can this create? Doubt and insecurity. You know, Taurus is a lot about confidence, and when it's negatively aspected, it's insecurity. So what can happen here is we had a really good thing going for us, but we pushed ourselves too hard. We got too overwhelmed. We got too frustrated by our outside environment. We picked some fights with other people we didn't mean to, and we aren't communicating clearly, and other people pick some fights for us, and now we're confused, and now we're doubting ourselves, and now we're insecure, and now we want to throw everything out. Oh, maybe it's just too too hard for me to fix. Oh, maybe I'm never going to fix relationships. They're always going to suck. You know, maybe I'm never going to be able to rest and relax. It's just too unrealistic and, and, and makes no sense. And it's not for me, maybe for other people, but not for me. You know, we can get down on ourselves here and really insecure and, and forget everything, you know, uh, whatever, you know, and play the victim in some kind of way. Okay. You know, especially too with Mars and Libra. So there could be some of that going on. Not only that, but with the Uranus involved, we can feel really anxious. Anxious Uranus can bring that and nervous and restless. You know, I, I can't fix these things and I, I don't know, I really want to and I don't know what to do. And, you know, and people are being weird. So uh, that can be quite hard. In addition to that, we've also got the quincunx on the other side here over to Neptune and Pisces, another hard alignment. You know, and what's Neptune? Neptune is emotions. This can bring sad emotions, weepiness at ourselves, at other people. Um, it can bring even more confusion here as well and can also bring, um, trigger old wounds from the past. You know, to me, Neptune, Pisces. Pisces has to do with the past, can trigger old wounds from the past here um, and make, and especially too with this new moon opposite Chiron, make, make us feel like this is too out of reach. Th these things are just too out of reach and too foreign and never going to work uh, as we move forward. You know, Mercury's in a square with Pluto, so it can just bring a lot of triggers, a lot of fears, a lot of insecurities, and a lot of pain up from the past that isn't fully resolved or that we thought was resolved but really isn't and is now coming back. Okay. Um, and I think the message of this new moon, because I think those are all the alignments I'm going to mention. Yeah, I mean... Which other ones do I want to mention? I'm like, the other ones are also kind of crappy too. Venus at the last degree of Scorpio, Mercury square Pluto. So I think that's all I want to mention here. <laughs> um, and because of that, what I think the message of this new moon is, um, is to not give up. The message of this moon is to, of this new moon is to not give up fixing these things in our life that need fixing, you know, and is to not lose the passion and the drive to fix our relationships, to fix our time and resources, and to fix our thought processes. It's to not not fix it, and it's to not give up the drive and the passion, but it's to figure out how to, how to temper that passion or how to use that passion and how to use that drive in a much healthier and in a much more productive kind of way so that we don't ruin our progress and so that we don't fall backwards and so that we don't create unnecessary stress within ourselves and within our lives and unnecessary arguments with people that do not need to happen. Okay. I, I think that's what it is because I do think there's something good that's going on here at this new moon. Fixing problems is a beautiful thing, you know? F fixing stuff with relationships, fixing stuff with your minds is a beautiful thing that I think does need to happen, but it's just how. It's just the how that it happens um, and, and the journey and the experience of that that I think needs to be finessed uh, a little bit better here. And because um, we have a lot of passion, we have a lot of drive, but the acting on it is a little weird because our emotions are so strong. I think a tip I can give you is that I think we might also need to take some time. We might need to go slow, go a bit slow and take some time here 
um, in order for our emotions to calm down and in order for other people's emotions to calm down as we bring things together. Okay. And I think that's it because that's all I want to say for right now, I think I'm just going to repeat that one more time to make sure I didn't forget anything or leave anything out. So let me do that. What I think is going on at this new moon in Libra is that we are getting a lot of passion, a lot of motivation, a lot of inspiration, and a lot of drive to fix some things in our life that are preventing us from being happy, which is in particular our relationships, our time, and our resources, and our thought processes, which is very positive. Um, and this passion, this drive to fix a lot of these things is then leading to a lot of beautiful understanding and insights about how we can fix these things and in what way as we move forward. But even though we're getting a lot of motivation and insights about what isn't working in our lives and about how to fix it, I think that passion and that motivation comes on a little bit too fast and a little bit too strong. Not only does that passion motivation come on too fast and too strong, but I think we also have a lot of things that we need to fix as well um, that could also be um, a little bit difficult. And because we've got a lot of things, because we've got a lot of feelings coming on too strong and a lot of things that we're realizing that we now need to fix in our reality, I think we're very overwhelmed and we don't know where to start. And because we're very overwhelmed and don't know where to start, I think we're getting mad at ourselves for not doing things better, fa faster, sooner, more effectively. And I think we're also mad at other people too for not reading our minds, you know, and for not doing things as well that we need faster and sooner too, which can create a lot of confusion with our relationships and a lot of confusion within ourselves for something that we were just clear on or something that we were just getting some good insights on can create a lot of confusion within ourselves and a lot of fear and insecurity and doubt um, as well and anxiousness and nervousness and and sadness and emotion, uh, especially from things from the past that perhaps have not been as healed as fully as we might like to think that they perhaps once were. Um, and because we are going about fixing these things all wrong, <laughs> um, really, um, I think what the message of this new moon is, is that we really do need to take time, take time here to, to calm our emotions down and to really think things through more clearly before we move on so that we don't upset ourselves and so that we don't um, create unnecessary arguments and miscommunications with other people. Okay, not only do we need to like slow down so that we don't create chaos, which is very possible at this time when there doesn't need to be as much. Um, but I think we also need to um, slow down right to get our head on straight as well. Not only that, I think we also need to be kind to ourselves and pace ourselves as we work through the process. And that's going to help us uh, like a week or two from now, maybe around that full moon in Aries, two weeks from now, that's going to help us to more effectively fix these things that we need, but without all the drama that is going to accompany it or that could accompany it. Okay. I um, mean, I think that's it. Anything else that I want to note? I, I, I'm i just going to say it again. This new moon is very intense and not in a pleasant way. Um, so this can create a lot of internal anger at yourself and a lot of weird things with relationships, arguments or disagreements or cross wires that are just not that pleasant. So be very, very careful. Um, be very careful at this new moon about what you say and about how you say it and about what you do. In my opinion, especially with Mercury retrograde is to err on the side of caution here and, and to be patient and to give yourself a little bit more time. So if you are feeling overwhelmed at this new moon, give yourself more time. Realize you don't have to do everything at once, that it can be a process. It can take a few more weeks and that's okay. Uh, to fix these things and if and if a relationship is really pushing you to do something try to buy yourself some time as well so i think that's a big key there this new moon is very volatile because we're being hard on ourselves or other people are being hard on us or weird with us buy yourself some time give your own self time and if you're dealing with someone else try to push them off give me a week can you give me a week to get back to you? Can you give me a week to think this through, you know, and ask extra questions um, that are more thoughtful in order to get to the bottom of what's actually happening? Okay, that to me is like the big point and the big key for you all to know here. 
not to give up, not to give up fixing things, not to give up changing things in your life, just to do it more slowly with more thought and with more time and with more care because the emotions could be running very high. Okay. Um, now, if I wanted to give you some examples, let, let me let me do that now. What could be going on here? Maybe I'll start with the time, the time and the resources. Okay. <sighs> What could be going on is that over the course of the past few months and years, um, some of you could have had a lot of your time and resources tied up in hard, stressful things. So this could mean jobs you don't want to be doing or jobs that are hard for you or time spent being responsible for things you don't want to be responsible for or money being very, very hard and difficult. Well, what could have really been happening over the course of the past month to give a specific example, is that some of you could have been like, I gotta get out of this. I gotta leave this job and get one that I like better, or I gotta tell my boss I need a different job, or I gotta do my money differently, um, and I gotta do my time, my time in regards to how I work differently so that I can feel more at ease, right? And honor more of my soul and rest and relax more. And it could have been difficult for you to do that over the course of the past month. So at this new moon, some of you could come in with a real drive to say this month, I I got to figure it out. You know, last month I didn't really figure this issues out. This month I really have to change my time, change my resources, change my job, change my habits, talk to my boss for the better. And you could feel this so strongly. I really got to change all of this stuff that um, you could act out in weird ways. Not only could that come on really strongly that you could act out in weird ways or get mad, mad at your boss, mad at other people, and they could, if we're not doing things that needs to be done here, um, that could uh, be going on, um, but you could feel like there's too much to fix. I, you know, I, too much of my job is spent doing something I don't want to do, and and I need this money from this job I don't like. And for me to fix, to leave the job with the money that I need, it would be a whole thing. And for me to tell the boss that I need this time, like it would be a whole thing. So I think there's also a lot of that that could go on. And if that is you and that is your situation, the message for you is to not freak out here and to not lose hope about changing your money to be better and changing your job to be better or your habits or your routines to rest and relax or to not give up hope, but to give yourself enough time to calm down so that you aren't mad at other people and acting out unexpectedly and so that you can come up with a more measured plan of action in order to fix things bit by bit by bit. Okay, because everything doesn't have to be fixed overnight. And it doesn't have to be fixed 100%. It just some progress needs to be eventually made there, okay? So that's one way that this could go for you. If this isn't about that, then for some of you, this could be relationship related. Clearly, if you're working with a boss, relationship related, okay? But for some of you, this could just be personal relationships, you know, with a family member or with a, a romantic partner or something. And maybe what's been going on for many years prior to this is that you've been with a partner that he doesn't really honor your spirit and soul and that doesn't really let you be at peace and rest and relax and have fun and have fun. Maybe you've been with a really demanding partner, you know, or something like that, that could have been hard. If it's not that, then maybe over the course of the past few years, you've been with a partner that you liked, but maybe they've had like a few habits that like it just, just rub you the wrong way, you know, or that you find really inconsiderate. So what you could be realizing at this new moon in Libra is like, I really got to, I really got to fix this. I really got to let go of this partner, you know, end this relationship or, or get, tell them what's up or tell them I don't like this thing. You could be really feeling like the, the passion to really right this wrong when it comes to your relationship in some kind of way. Um, but even though you're feeling this passion to correct these relationships, it could be coming on too strong. And maybe you could say things insensitively that you don't mean and then create an argument here that could be quite hard. Um, or maybe you could be passive aggressive, right? When it comes to, to saying things, or maybe you could still feel a little bit scared about what needs to happen here as well. That could create a lot of problems. And I think what you need to do is wait, wait to say anything fully to a partner until your emotions calm down um, as you move forward. Okay. Not only could you feel like this partner, like, like you just really need to fix it now, but you could also feel like it's going to take forever to fix. You know, I really need to fix this now with my with my partner. But if I do fix, it, it's going to take forever to fix. And that's a whole thing. 
Um, so there can also be that. And again, there's a need to slow down and to take the pressure off yourself here because the pressure is not helping at one bit, I don't think. Um, so that's what I might recommend there. I should also note too, if you're talking about relationships for a minute, um, this doesn't have to be with relationships in the flesh. Like for some of you, you're really, these problem people are out of your life, but you may still harbor resentment or pain or hurt from these people that wronged you in the past as well. So if this new moon doesn't apply to like someone in your life, um, that's either a boss or someone you work with or a romantic partner or a family relationship. And it, even if it doesn't apply to a real person, it can just be you in your mind realizing, hey, I'm still hurt over a past relationship and I still have patterns in relationships from a past, from a past relationship that I haven't fully healed. And it could be you really getting angry at yourself. When am I going to fix this pattern that I have in relationships that's not good for me? When am I going to fix this pattern? I got to fix this pattern now, you know, so that I can do relationships relationships in a more healthy way, that can be hard. Um, that can be part of the problem, you know, or, um, or you could feel like it's just going to take forever for me to fix this pattern and it's never going to go away, you know, so it can be that in that way too. Another thing that just came to me as I'm giving these examples, the, the, they seem kind of opposite problems, you know, but they're both related. At this new moon, we could feel I got to fix everything all at once, and also, it's too much for me to fix. We could feel both. They, they, they kind of seem opposite to each other, but they're both happening. And to me, that's a very Mars and Libra thing, <laughs> right? Because Mars doesn't like to be in Libra. It's like, I got to fix everything, but I can't. I got to fix everything, but it's too much. So I want to be clear here. It's both these issues that we're feeling at once, even though they seem opposite, okay? Because we're humans. We can feel two opposite things at once, and, and I think that's what's going on. All right, the last example that I'll give you, too, is when it comes to our thought processes, OK, maybe for a long time in life, um, we have been feeling that life is stressful um, and thinking that life had to be stressful and thinking that we always had to work and serve and be responsible and be on guard all the time. Well, what could be going on at this new moon is that we could really be trying to confront our thought processes about how much we have to work and how life is stressful. We could really be trying to confront our thought processes to change the way that we think, to realize that life doesn't have to be stressful, that it can be easy, it can be fun, it can be relaxing, and that rest is justified. We need to rest in order to tackle life better, or that or that rest shouldn't be justified. Just as humans, we deserve to rest. You know, we're, we need to change our processes, thought processes too. And I think another way that this could go is that at this new moon, we could be very angry at ourselves that our thought processes are still stuck in the past. That even though we know our mind needs to change, even though we know we need to accept intuition and rest and play, that we still can't accept it mentally. And we could be really mad at ourselves. Like, why... <laughs> Why can't I get it? You know, what's wrong with me? I really want to, but I can't. And we could be projecting some of our insecurities onto other people uh, as well. That can be quite hard here. So I want to note uh, there can be some of that. And if that's you, you also need to give calm down, calm down and give yourself some time and give yourself some grace, you know, as you figure more of these things out as you move on. Okay. All right, so that's what I'm going to say uh, there. And I think that's the examples that I have. And I, maybe I should say that too, you know, they're all kind of work together, you know, because a lot of times rom like romance involves relationships, like everything involves relationships in life, <laughs> you know. So a lot of times these things are all going to work together. I should note another thing too I should also say is that, is that the internal perspective really can change a lot as well. Okay, and I think that's it. Um. Okay, I'm trying to decide if there's any other like loose end I need to tie up. I don't think so. I think the message here is that there's a lot of w weird stuff going on at this new moon. Arguments with yourself, arguments with other people, and they can be easily resolved. They can be easily resolved by not putting too much pressure on yourself or other people to fix things too soon, by being patient, by giving yourself more time, by being compassionate to other people, and by communicating slowly, deliberately, and thoughtfully. <laughs> a lot of those things can be resolved. Okay. 
Not fully, you know, I mean, maybe when you fix and change things, right? Sometimes when you fix and fix and change things, there's still going to be some kind of disagreement. So I'm not saying that by you slowing down and calming down is everything going to calm down and all the conflict with relationships going to calm down. I'm just saying that by you slowing down and giving yourself more time and other people more time to process and by you being more deliberate, it's going to take, it's going to take the the pressure keg off. It's going to take the fireworks down like 75%. It's going to take it down a whole lot, um, which is very, very good. Um, so I think that's a huge message here. By you calming down, like to add another point, by you calming down and taking time and communicating deliberately, it's not going to diffuse all of the disagreement that you may be having with another person or may be about to have with another person or with another thing in your life, but it is going to take the pressure off of it immensely and the stress and the anxiety surrounding it. Okay, another thing that I want to emphasize too that I've kind of said before, but just want to say again, is that like big, big things aren't necessary, right? Like if you can't hack a big step or if you feel overwhelmed by the big step or whatever, like do small things, do a little bit here, a little bit there to fix whatever you need to fix, right? You're, you're, this is not a test that you're being graded on at this new moon. This is not a test of like how much can you fix in your life and how fast can you fix it? This is not a test, okay? There's no need to race a clock and to, to ace a thing. So if you, <laughs> all right, I mean, if you are feeling out of sorts um, in your life and when it comes to working through things, take your time and just do what you can do. Just do a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Take your time and just do what you can do and, and just do what a, a little bit here because a little bit is going to go a long freaking way. A little bit is going to go a long, longer than you think um, at this time to help you with what you need um, and I think, I think the important thing at this new moon, I think, I think the biggest worry for me at this new moon is not that you're not going to do anything to fix <clears throat> the issues in your life, but that you're going to do it in all the wrong ways, you know, too soon, too fast, too, too abruptly, you know, uh, 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 to stop and go. So I, I think that's the main message. My, my biggest fear isn't that you're not going to want to fix things. It's that you're going to do it in the wrong ways. So give yourself time. And take the pressure off so that it can be done right. And so that there isn't as much stress. All right. And that's it. Because it's it, I'm now just going to read the inside degrees um, for this time period to give you a different perspective or a different voice on this new moon. And the inside degrees, which I have up on the screen now, were not written by me, but they were written by a man named Elias Lonsdale, who I believe channeled each of the meanings of the inside degrees from spirits. Okay. Um, this new moon is at 13 degrees Libra. I, I'm not going to read it um, just because it didn't really resonate with me as much, but I am going to leave it up on the screen in, in case some of you want to pause the video and look at it because I'm sure it's going to mean something to some of you. Um, I tended to like 14 Libra better, so I'm going to look at that. Okay, it says 14 Libra. Embarking upon a highly unusual journey, in which getting there is a very remote prospect. So what that means to me is that at this new moon, in Libra, we are trying to fix a lot of things that are not in alignment with our soul, our, our, our job, our habits, our time, our resources, our relationships, and our thought processes. And it feels like a very remote freaking prospect. <laughs> so much to do. I'm never going to freaking get there. It feels very far off in the distance that we're actually going to be able to fix any of these issues that we're now all of a sudden very pissed about. <laughs> okay. Which is okay. All right, that's what that means to me. It says upon, it says next, but along the way, upon the eternal road, you come upon absolutely everything that can trigger interchanges. So what it means to me, which is maybe what I haven't mentioned before, is that we are trying to fix these things and it feels impossible. It feels impossible to fix these things so that the inner world can change first, so that we can get the inner perspective right in the ways that it is that we need and so that we can fix the internal feelings and the internal thoughts before the external time resources and relationships come together so that's another thing that i that i think is super important here yeah we're really upset about all this stuff we have to fix and we're overwhelmed and it's not coming together and it's not coming together because we need to get right with ourselves first and we need to calm our emotions down first and we need to get our perspective first before this other stuff comes together, even though it will, it will eventually. 
work itself out. You know, you know, which is an interesting thing, right? That the Libra, the new moon in Libra, Libra is about relationships. The new moon in Libra is going to want you to focus on the relationships. It's going to, it's going to put you there. The new moon in Libra, you know, is going to push you to, to fix things with relationships. And I think this, I think this inside degree is saying, yeah, you need to fix things with relationships, but a lot of times fixing things with relationships starts with you. You have to fix yourself first because relationships are built on two people and two people have to be strong in themselves and, and, and who they are. So I think that, that this inside degree is also saying, yeah, this new moon is a lot about relationships. And for a lot of you, that's going to be super top of mind. But before you deal with the relationships, that's a distraction. You need to get yourself right first here in order to move forward. Okay. It says next, you are granted the perfect view of the entire passing scene. Um, so what that indicates to me is, is that this struggle, wanting to fix a lot of things, but it's seeming very far off and having to go inwards to work with ourself is then going to give us a better view, a better view and a better way of handling things um, after this point. And to figure out what a more perfect, more perfect or a more better way, a more better way of working things together. So I think that's what I want to say in terms of that inside degree is we got a lot of things we need to fix that are not in alignment with our soul at this time. It, it's very overwhelming and it feels impossible to do, but it feels very overwhelming and impossible for a reason to for us to fix ourselves first and the inner issue and the core issue first and to get right with ourselves first and to calm our emotions down first and to get that perspective right first. And then once we do that, that's then going to help everything else come together more smoothly as we move on. Okay, so that's what I get from that degree. Um, before I go, I also wanted to read um, two, uh, two other degrees really quickly, more so about the relationships, right? Like this is the Libra, right? It's the tug of war between I want to focus on myself, but I also want to focus on another person and what's the best way to do it. And so I also want to want to note another few thing about relationships. And I wanted to look at the degrees that Mercury um, is retrograde, right? Mercury is going to station direct at 10 degrees Libra and it went retrograde around 24, 25 Libra. So I'm going to look at that as well. But I wanted to note here, look at this inside degree for 10 degrees Libra. It says this, personally, personality cultivated as charm, the style and stance of one who puts out an image and curls the soul under, taking advantage of favorable currents to express popular and safe qualities. Okay. What this says to me is that we've been, I think for many years, hiding our true self and pretending to be something that we're not with people so that we can be liked. If I also wanted to look at 24 degrees Libra as well, where Mercury stationed to go retrograde, it says this, blown by the wind, shifted by every current, absolutely adaptable. You can become anything on demand to be what others wish. Instantaneously given over before you can stop it. So another little side point that I want to add on here is that the relationship issue, I think, for the past few months and years, if you will, I think it's been years because the last Saturn-Pluto conjunction 36 years ago was right where Mercury is retrograde now, you know, at, at these degrees. So I think... I think relationships have been an issue for a long time here. And I think part of the problem in relationships is that we have not been communicating about who we really are. We've been hiding parts of ourselves and hiding what's really important to us and pretending to be something that we're not both 10 and 24 degrees. We're about this and we're learning to come out of that. We're learning at this new moon in Libra to, to stop saying things we don't mean and to stop pretending to be something that we aren't and to stop, you know, putting ourselves in these situations with relationships who only get part of our soul and who don't understand us. And the way to do that is to first get right with ourselves and have some interchanges based on the 14 degree Libra in order to fix the things um, externally, um, but that we are getting there. We are getting there. So that's just a little bit of a side note, probably for an, a, lot, a larger conversation. But I do want to say that for some of you who are curious, I think, I think the real issue with the relationships is that we've been pretending to be something we're not in order to fit in and look good. And now we're having to come out of that, which is hard to do. And overwhelming and we've got to get ourselves right first we've got to get our perspective right on this first in order to do it differently outwardly but that they're all together okay 
And I think that's all I want to say. I hope that was clear. I always feel, speaking of insecurity, earlier in this video, I always feel a bit insecure with, with my videos whenever Mercury is retrograde because my mind just works very differently and loses track, <laughs> loses track of what I've said uh, more so than it would other times. But I, I hope that was clear. Um, and, and especially too, because this new moon is rough, is rough. Okay, your card for this time period is the Ace of Pentacles reversed. What is this about? Um, well, I should say that um, to me, the pentacles upright are about confidence in a lot of ways. Not only that, but the pentacles to me are about our physical reality. And with it being reversed, I'm feeling like our confidence just isn't there where it needs to be in order to make changes at this time. And I'm feeling too that uh, our physical reality is in disarray. You know, whatever it is we want physically, our life to look like physically just isn't quite there in the ways that it is that we need. Ooh. We've got the Hierophant reversed here as well. Um, man, I, I feel the, the way that I feel the, about the Hierophant reversed, the way it just hit me is I feel it. I feel like there's kind of a, a mentality at this time, like every man for himself, you know, every per, every woman for herself, like every person, every person for themselves, you know, like I think there's a feeling that like I want I want to fix things with my life, but no one's going to fix it. Like I want to fix things with with my life, with my relationships, because it's in disarray, but no one's going to help me fix it. And the, everyone else is just going to create more problems for me. And there's too much to do. And I think the message here is, A, you can do it, right? I think the message is like, so, so what if you have to do a lot of things yourself, you know, like, so what you can handle it, you know what I mean? Like, stop seeing that as a bad thing, you can handle a lot of stuff. Um, I think the other message here, too, is not only like believe in yourself, you can fix even if it feels overwhelming, you can do it, you can do it on your own. But I think there's also a message too that some people may also help you as well. But if you do work with people, to fix these things, again, you're going to have to be more confident in, in your own in your own self and about what you're initiating with people. And you're going to have to communicate, I, I think, in a more clear way as well with what's happening. So I don't know. That's what I get from those cards. I get the Ten of Pentacles next. Um, I think that's what I get from these cards. Anything else? The Hierophant. Yeah, sometimes when I see the Hierophant reverse, I also think of it too as like non-traditional approaches. So I think there, I mean, that's been a theme with Saturn and Aquarius for a while, but I think that's also a message here. Uh, maybe try doing things in a different way that you wouldn't normally do them um, because that may also help you too. Um, so I think that's a, you know, know that you don't need other people that you can really fix a lot of these things on your own okay um but if you feel like you do need other people understand that the way that you work with people is going to have to be in a, in a different way in which you feel more confident in yourself and um speak up for yourself and where you're more clear you're more clear and more direct about what is actually needed here and about what's actually going on as you bring things together and i think that's it Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope that you do the best that you can. Yeah, hang in there at this new moon in Libra. And I'll talk to you um, at the full moon in Aries two weeks from now. If you like this video, please like it on YouTube. Share it with your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to you later.